So in the case of perceptions and realities, we think about what is the story even with our significant others, perhaps our business partners, perhaps our career or job teams or a team we manage, is that are we really clear in terms of our communication so that we check in every so often? Now, you know, we have lots of stories around perception versus reality and our own experience. And I have to say that as clear as we are, we still run into the problem with our own teams, with our own partnerships, that we go, holy cow, that's not what I was trying to say. That is not, was never my intention behind the conversation that we are having, yet that's how somebody interpreted it. And so they have a different perception of the story or the information that we're, we're sharing. So, you know, the breakdown is around un expressed intentions or unexpressed expectations as well. So we go into a meeting, we come out of a meeting and everybody thinks it's all copacetic. We're all on the same page when in reality, the filters are, we're hearing these conversations through a set of filters that may not be. So what does that mean? So how do we fix that problem? How do we actually try and avoid it? Well, it's very, very hard to avoid first off is what I wanna to say to that. Secondly, it has to be very intentional. So in other words, and we've seen this, uh, Stephanie, in, in long-term relationships where we operate on top of just getting into a groove and these relationships can be very long. I mean, I'm talking years of relationships and partnerships in business or other friendships even. And there's misunderstandings that start to show up in specific circumstances. And you realize that everybody or the partnership or the relationship has been operating on top of two different perceptions of the reality of what the relationship is and what it's about, what the partnership is and what it's all about. Now, I'll give you, I'll, and I'll kick the, you know, I'll, you know, I'll kick the can over to you, if you will, to kind of pick up on that because you've had a couple of experiences and that's part, and so have I, by the way. So that's what's actually driving this perceptions versus reality conversation because it needs to be cleaned up. It has to be very intentional. It has to be very clear. So you go ahead, maybe share a little bit of your recent experience that might be helpful. Sure. I think what you're saying also needs to be grounded in my first presupposition. And one of the very first things I learned when I was doing my performance psychology training is that the presupposition in communication is everybody is doing the very best they can. So any conversation I enter and I really work hard at communication because I'm not a natural communicator. I'm a natural introvert. So as much as I love to talk and I am very intuitive, I don't have a natural way of um, expressing myself without being very mindful and intentional. So there's times I have to slow down and go, okay, let me just be mindful because I want this to come across the way that it's intended. So I'll actually stop myself from talking. I've seen you do this over the years and it really creates that, that connection where, okay, what I'm going to say really matters and what I'm going to say is what I mean. But I find sometimes that even that can be misinterpreted because it also shows up and it can show up for other people as being aggressive or assertive or it can, uh, controlling or it can show up for other people based on their experiences, their values and what's going on. So to circle back to what you were saying about my recent experiences, what I've realized, and it's funny that all of these are my stories right now, it feels like I should be doing a <laughs> solo podcast, sorry, hon, um, is that as much as I try to communicate in, in my values and assume that everybody is doing the best they can, when we're in communication with people that we care about long-term relationships and we do set that comfort zone and we, got, we do get to a place of familiarity, what happens is that when people's life situation changes, let's say somebody has a baby or somebody is uh, moving on to, you know, a business is growing or, or things in life are changing and people are having to look at what, you know, we've gone through in the last couple of years, people are having to really look at what matters in their life and in their business and does it align. So when external things would happen to change a situation and we don't shift how we perceive the reality, then that's where we get in trouble. So over the last couple of years, I've had some business partners and relationships that I absolutely love and adore. I have decades of investment of friendship, business and love. And sometimes those entanglements can get you in trouble. But I work really hard at trying to keep them in their own swim lanes. Um, sometimes it's difficult um, just because of the nature of the business, whether it's the, sport, the performance psychology side, whether it's sport. Sport is very emotionally driven. 
And what I've been trying to do over the years is myself and also to, to work with my partners and other people in businesses that I'm helping to build is that to treat your sport business as a business. And that in itself is very weird. It's not normal because with coaches, they are usually sen- selling their time by the hour and they be- they get very connected and committed to my clients or my player or my skater. And it becomes part of the identity. So what I've committed to over the years is say, okay, well, how do we step back and treat it like a business? So I go into that every time with that presupposition. In the last couple of years, it's bit me in the butt um, because I was operating with that and that with that level of commitment, thinking the people around me were still in the same situation Mm -hmm. or they were having the same reality. So in one situation, um, I had a a business partner who actually uh, left the business uh, completely. She was about to become a full partner, um, couldn't um, see where it was going. The pandemic had given her and her husband a way different view of the world, which changed their values, which unfortunately wasn't communicated to me. So I was operating on top of the old rules, the old values and the old commitment, trying to make the business work, thinking we are aligned. So that's where I was wrong. I had the expectation that we were still moving together in the same direction. So when that blew up, there was a fallout because not only do we lose the business context and relationship that had been built around her and myself and our and, and the synergy between us, it also had a ripple effect with the other members of the team and the other members of the, stra- the staff. So for the last couple of years, my reality has shifted. And the perception of my business hasn't. So I'm having to create an illusion that the business, well, it's not really an illusion, but the business is still operating the exact same way with still changing and shifting the values into a new reality. So I don't like using the term new normal because to me, it's like the word safe. It's com- It's been completely hijacked. But a new reality allows the perception and the communication to elevate if we allow it. The second example was, again, decades old relationships operating across time zones and across mountains with a a very clear and powerful intent is to only teach and treat people like champions, to treat people like professionals and to help them elevate their performance so that they can always win, but not just in this area of sport but in all areas of their life. So that's the presupposition I was operating on top of. And over the years with my partners, some of those things have changed. So what we're going through right now is a realignment conversation and a realignment, which is very difficult. I find it difficult because in the interim, we've stepped over very important conversations that I see now, or I've stepped over and didn't notice what was going on for my partners. And that's where I had to take full responsibility in both scenarios where where was i pretending not to know that things were not only changing for me and in our industry but things were drastically changing for my partners and how i was occurring because i was still operating on top of those old assumptions is i was occurring as aggressive i was occurring as not caring i was occurring as someone that wasn't paying attention to what was going on and the changes and that came back to me as such a shock because that's not how i operate and anyone that knows me and works with me knows that Basically, I come from my heart space, my intuition first. I don't come from a money driven or or intellectually based conversation. So I'm having two conversations. One is money and intellectual and growing the business. And the other one is how do we emotionally, intuitively and and uh, energetically keep moving through all the bullshit of the world right now and still stay together. So long story short two scenarios where I needed to take full responsibility for where I wasn't paying attention to the shift in reality of the other people around me and maybe not paying attention as much as what was important to us in that time as well. Yeah, I think you make some great, great points. And those are great stories and great examples. You know, first and foremost, in spite of the degree of training that we have, we do have a lot going on. And, you know, these things unfold the way they do for a couple of reasons, not the least of which is that first and foremost, it's not an event. It is shifting trajectory for what's happening in business. So in other words, these are little pieces. These are little pebbles in the shoe, if you will, that are ignored and or stepped over because I don't want to deal with it right now. I'm too busy. So it seems minor, you ignore it and or you forget about it or you go, I'll talk to them about that later. And then the next thing you know, a week passes and time passes and you forget about it. But the thing is, is that trajectory continues to change. Here's the point of all of this, I think, is that, and often, by the way, I don't want to miss another point, is that sometimes it's ignored at the time because it feels like to 
address the issue would maybe be confrontational. Mm-hmm. And people don't want to be confrontational. Historically, everybody kind of backs away or or it's common, I should say, not historically, but it's common to back away from those difficult conversations as opposed to saying, how can I have this difficult conversation without it sounding confrontational. Now, what I've learned to do, and I'm not necessarily great at it, by the way, so keep in mind that when Stephanie and I are sharing these stories, we're actually sharing our own experience and and some of the work that we do that we actually train. And that is, is that in the case of a a confrontational, rather than having a confrontational conversation, you know, there's a couple of phrases. One is, I like to use the term, I'd invite you to consider. So when I'm having a conversation with somebody and it shows up for me as odd or out of whack, or maybe even it pisses me off a little bit, I'll use uh, one of the phrases that I often use, which is, you know, I just invite you to consider that what you just said lands for me as whatever it lands for me as. It's a way to say, I'm taking responsibility for what you said, but I'm going to invite you to consider that how you said it lands for me this way. And I can say why it landed for me that way. It's just taking that sharp edge off, pushing back and going, well, what the fuck did you just say? Like, I don't even believe you said that. Like, how could you say that? And there's a lot of emotionality uh, wrapped into those confrontational conversations because at that point it becomes confrontational. So first yeah. off, that's one way to address it. It's just like, and I'm just using an example as language that has become familiar for me that I use quite often because it is a way to approach a difficult conversation. Secondly, is that when you're kept catching up on a conversation. In other words, this happened two weeks ago. This happened a week ago. You've had time to think about it. You step back from the emotionality of it. Now you can sit back and you can say, okay, I need to have a conversation with you. And it's so uncomfortable for me, but I just don't see how we can avoid having this conversation. So respectfully, just know that I'm not meaning it to be confrontational, but it's important to have the conversation. So let me get through the kind of the sticky parts of it so that we can put it all on the table, have the conversation and get some of these things resolved. Now, that's a way different approach to in the moment, emotionally charged, attack somebody or come at somebody or get angry with somebody or, you know, whatever, you know, burst out in tears, whatever it might be. The point is, is that We have to think about how we do that. Now, that's a part of communication because their perception is not your reality and vice versa. 